Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Bridgeland and Melody Barnes, the former directors of the White House Domestic Policy Council under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. Good afternoon. So I have to confess, Mel and my first reaction backstage was, we have to follow Jordan Sparks? But, but what you don't know is that we are going to be featured on this season's American Idol. <laughs> 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 and then there's John's new movie coming out. Right. <laughs> so uh, I know it's a little bit, a bit of a downer, but I just want to say that um, <laughs> I have to acknowledge that. Um, Opportunity Nation truly has been a blessing in that it's been uh, given an opportunity to work across party, across administration. For two years, we reached out and listened to um, voices all across America, including those in the Heritage Foundation, those Center for American Progress, Brookings Institution, but most importantly, and thanks to Dorothy Stoneman, who of course is in the first row, <laughs> working on the front lines for 30 years. Um, I think the most uh, compelling thing that I've experienced through Opportunity Nation is uh, just listening to the voices of young people. And, you know, when I see your plan that emerged that talked about, you know, we function in policy circles, and the first principle is, you know, love, empathy, forgiveness, uh, responsibility, uh, just so much to teach the nation and, and our policymakers. So hats off for your fantastic set of recommendations. But I also just wanted to mention that um, you know these issues require uh, political leadership we've seen the power of presidential leadership uh, on these issues and across two administrations when I was with President Bush we actually had the White House task force on dis disadvantaged youth and discovered that remarkably there were 339 federal programs spending 225 billion dollars every year to help uh, disadvantaged youth in the country so there are resources there are programs how do we more eff effectively and efficiently mobilize them? And then um, I had the thrill, Melody and the President organized this White House Council for Community uh, Solutions, and I got this call one day and was asked to, to serve, serve on it, um, a Republican. And uh, I, uh, they used to kid, you know, Bridge, you don't get to come to the fancy parties, but, um, you know, we're excited to have you work with us. And through that, um, that council, thanks to John Bon Jovi, and a number of the members who could reach millions of young people, we, we just spent most of our early time listening to the voices of young people. And what we heard was that, you know, the vast majority of them had large dreams. They saw the power of education and career to their life hopes and raising families. Uh, but, you know, interestingly, 70%, it wasn't just about them and their own life prospects, 70% of them wanted to give back to their communities and serve others. And yet only 3% reported that they were doing so because of the barriers they, they were facing. To, to, to me, that was one of the more exciting parts of the uh, White House Council for Community Solutions work. And the council came forward not only with um, plans of action, but uh, these, this wonderful focus on community collaboration. And uh, beyond our service in the White House, and particularly Melody, uh, with her ongoing work, is doing so much to foster the relationship between community collaboration and opportunity youth. So Mel, over to you. Thanks, Bridge. Well, as, as Bridge has said, this work has been bipartisan year after year after year. And just as he worked on it in the Bush White House, I was proud to serve President Obama for three years and to help establish the White House Council for Community Solutions that John so ably served on. And I can tell you that we created that council because President Obama cares very, very deeply about these issues and is shocked and saddened and determined to fix the fact that we've got this opportunity gap. The fact that only 4% of young people born to parents at the bottom rungs of the opportunity ladder are able to make it to the top. Believing that we have to do something about it and as a nation, in a bipartisan fashion, have to be committed to that. And for those reasons, both John and I, coming from different administrations, have committed and dedicated ourselves to working on these issues even after both leaving the White House. And the thing that I'm doing right now, I serve as the chair of the Aspen Forum for Community Solutions, is to build on that work that John and members of the White House Council started and to create an institution that exists outside of government, but that can prod government, that can support communities, and to make sure that opportunity youth have the partners and have the resources and the solutions that they need. 
So in addition to focusing on community-based collaborations, which we believe are the smartest strategies to getting things done most effectively, we specifically are creating an Opportunity Youth Incentive Fund. And that fund is going to focus on putting a million dollars in, in up to 14 different communities around the country, supporting cross-sector collaboratives, the business sector, philanthropic sector, grassroots leaders, nonprofit leaders, local and appointed elected leaders, all the way up to the federal government, working together and doing so informed by youth voices, because I heard at that summit today the importance and the strength of youth voices to support those communities working together to make sure that we create pathways to a post-secondary credential and that at the end of attaining that credential, that young people are able to get jobs that support, help them support themselves and support their families and remain connected to the community. We know how important that is. We're here to support you. We're here to work with you and to do that with Opportunity Nation. But as I said, this takes everyone. It's just not the government, it's not just the private sector, everyone. And I know, Bridge, you've been focusing on some of the work that the private sector can do as well. Yes, I'd just like to mention, too, that, you know, 47% isn't some monolithic stereotype group in America. It's 100% Americans, and we all ought to all be supporting one another. And many of us, all of us, whether you're a veteran or a student who's gotten a college loan or a, my parents who are on Social Security and Medicare, and, and uh, we're all Americans and we all need to support one another. That's why I'm so excited, having worked with many um, in this room, we've developed a national roadmap of action to concretely look at what's, what can the private sector do, the nonprofit sector, and as importantly, the federal government across all these programs to strengthen the supports for the 6.7 million opportunity youth in the United States. We also, because some policymakers might not listen to the moral case, it's so great to hear the, on a bipartisan basis the, the members of Congress here today who are, who, are, who are listening and are leaders and advocates for it, but uh, marshaled the evidence that shows that you know, if we, the cost of inaction is $93 billion to taxpayers annually. And that case is waking up, I think, a lot of policymakers to the fact that this is uh, an issue we have to take on. We're also, I think, um, one area we had this great breakout session on career and technical education and truly believe that these enterprise pathways that maybe the United States has missed the boat a little bit on career and technical education. And when we did a survey of uh, high school dropouts all across the country, um, you know, I remember, never forget this young girl in Philadelphia who was 16 years old and she said, uh, we said, what do you want to be in life? And she said, I wanted to, I wanted to be an astrophysicist. And we said, I'm sorry, a what? And she was an, an astrophysicist inspired by the NASA space program. And, and then we asked her later on, Jeff Guerin, who's with our summit today, asked her, um, uh, so what are you doing now? And she literally was working the streets of, of Philadelphia. And you wonder how somebody's journey takes that kind of turn. And she said that she wanted to see a connection between what she was learning in school and what she wanted to be in life. And so also today, um, Opportunity Nation is uh, launching Enterprising Pathways, a, a national plan of action and conversation around uh, re-envisioning, re-imagining uh, career and technical education in the United States, which we think will help address the high school dropout epidemic so students see why they're there and connecting learning to careers, uh, reduce um, the costs of college. These 18 and 19 year olds in Michigan who are literally getting a high school diploma and a post-secondary credential with value in the labor market, again, by the age of 19. And third, we'll reduce costs to employers um, that they bear when they don't get a skilled workforce. So we think these enterprising pathways can help change that conversation and debate. Mel? Well, Often people look at the challenge ahead of us and they say, oh, it's too hard, it's too tough, we can't do anything, we can't make a difference. But what we know, and what we know everyone in this room knows, it's the reason why you're here, is that we can make a difference. We can do what it takes to actually change our communities, help support the futures of young people, and to make sure that our country is strong and thriving and growing and we don't have to wait to get started. Everyone knows that this is a big year, um, and we are preparing to go into 2013 with new leadership uh, all across the nation after a presidential election, and we have to be prepared and armed with a plan. 
And that's what Opportunity Nation is about. That's why we're here. That's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing with so many colleagues at the Aspen Institute. But we also know that we can do that in a bipartisan fashion. And that, in fact, brings us some of our strength. When we are working together, linked arm in arm, across ideological lines, across party lines, to achieve our goals, we know that we're stronger and we're better for it. But what's most important is that we can take lessons from communities all across the country. Communities aren't waiting. That's one of the things that we learned at the White House in doing this work that there are smart solutions that exist in every community across the country, and that there are smart ways, start smart strategies that are being used to actually achieve the kind of change and the goals that we want. So we can take lessons from Year Up. We can take lessons from Youth Build. We can take lessons from City Year. We can take lessons from all of the great organizations that are in this room to help inform our policies, to help inform the way that we work with the business sector, to help inform the way that we talk to our elected leaders. So if we come together and we join and link arms in, through our individual organizations, under the Opportunity Nation banner, we can issue a call to action in every community and all the way up the chain to the White House that has to be responsive to the fact that we can no longer live in a country where it's okay that only 4% of youth can make it to the top of the ladder just because they happen to be born to parents who are poor or working poor. That's no excuse. That's not the country we are. That's not the country we will be. That's not the American dream. So I look for, forward to working with all of you. I know there's so many wonderful leaders in the room who are looking forward to working with you. Bridge and I are going to continue to work, at, work together, again, across partisan lines, because we share the same vision for the future that all of you share. Because we can do it, and as I said earlier to the Opportunity Youth gathered in the room, to the Youth Council gathered here, we are powerful when we work together. So thank you so much for, for your being here and for your participation. Now, I know that you all have been tweeting throughout the day, sharing your views, sharing your vision, and we want you to continue to do that. We want to continue to hear from you. But right now, we're going to take one question. I think we have time, barely, <laughs> get the hook out. But we have time for one question um, that Bridge and I would like to, um, to respond to that's come from you. So if we can put that up. So how can the Opportunity Nation Coalition build political support for the shared plan? Bridge, do you want to Sure. Pick so it I off? think the, the most powerful thing we've seen is just, uh, again, the youth voice, the youth recommendations, the youth stories, um, and then their expression through Youth Build, Year Up, City Year, the, the whole host of organizations um, that do so much to reconnect and re-engage young people, not just for themselves, but also in service to the country. And so I think literally from sharing those stories in your local communities with your mayors, with your other policymakers, your senators, your members of Congress, and then mobilizing around this, you know, shared plan of action that Opportunity Nation has developed in concert with you. Um, another interesting, you know, uh, framing is it's only 2% of, of young people who graduate high school wait to have a child before a stable family and get work before the age of 21 end up in poverty, whereas 76% 76, 76 of those who do none of those things end up in poverty. And, you know, there's also a lot of hope spots that I think we have to highlight as a result of this Grad Nation campaign. There are increases in high school graduation rates across 40 states in places that were thought to be chronically unfixable, literally where, you know, graduation rates have double-digit gains and young people, uh, often through their own leadership and will, uh, are finding pathways to success and successful career. Um, Mel, what would well, you add? I would add to that, one of the things that I was able to do, actually just before going into the White House after the last election, is to serve on the President's transition team. And no matter what happens in November, there will be that transition period We've got a plan. Let's take the plan to the transition team. These are the folks who will be, who will continue to move forward in the administration or perhaps a new administration that's coming in. This is bipartisan, nonpartisan event, so we'll speak to both <laughs> of those events um, possibly occurring. Take that plan to those individuals so that they can start thinking about it and putting it into the policy apparatus. Also, we've got great partners here. Um, again, across ideological, the ideological spectrum. 
It's important if we're going to work with the business community, if we're going to ensure internships and mentorship opportunities for opportunity youth, let's talk to some of our partners like the Chamber of Commerce and others about the ways that we can do that and to support those business leaders as they want to execute on these plans. So talk to the transition team, work with our partners, um, help frame the message, um, because we know this is such a big issue. It's one that the American people care about, and it's one that we are all putting our shoulder to the wheel on. I would also just add that I think sometimes we risk being too timid. And when you look at where the great progress has been made in the country, it's when the vision has been bold. Mm -hmm. And so I think as a start, if we scaled up in a significant fashion, youth build, not just because Dorothy's in the front row, but youth build, year up, city year. Um, if we took you know, the promise of the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act, have Melody having served Kennedy for eight years, uh, and ramp it up to a million people in full-time national service in the country, and we, we express a bold agenda that sort of becomes who uh, Opportunity Youth are and what our country can become. That, to me, is something that you know, we'll work hard on a bipartisan basis to achieve. Absolutely. It wasn't Jordan Sparks, but we did the best we could. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.